This is the back of the Tarantula Pro. This is the back of the Ender 3. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today is my video number 4 on the new Tarantula Pro. I uh, did first video which was the unboxing, then I did a detailed assembly video because the instructions are good but they were missing a couple of uh, steps. Then I did a testing video and we turned this on for the very first time and I did a few prints to show uh, the quality of uh, prints. And now it's time to talk about what are the differences between this printer and the very popular Ender 3 which I have here. I've been using actually the Ender 3 for almost two years now. Um, and I know a lot about the Pro. I don't have the Ender 3 Pro, but I know enough to make uh, comments for this comparison. So I have here about uh, 10 points that I'm going to cover today. The first one is packaging. Uh, packaging does not make a product as you know but it's always nice when you get a product that you paid a high price for in a very nice packaging. I don't have the box anymore for the Ender 3 but it was a regular plain brown box with some uh, black graphics with so very very basics. The um, box for the Tarantula Pro is this thing here. Look at the nice graphics, black with uh, orange and black graphics, very nice. Now let's talk about design, that's the first thing you do uh, or you see when you uh, assemble this thing. The design as you can see is very different, actually it, it looks like a, like a high tech piece of equipment compared to the Ender 3 that looks very basic, the same with Ender 3 Pro. Now let me uh, get my camera. This is the back of the Tarantula Pro. This is the back of the Ender 3. So again, no comparison. No instructions uh, when you assemble this thing. Um, I was a bit disappointed. In fact, I did a video on the Ender 3 instructions. Uh, in my opinion, the steps were, were wrong. Uh, for the Tarantula Pro, there is a nice uh, PDF file but um, it covers mainly the previous version of the printer uh, and it's missing a couple of steps. There's also a video from um, Omers uh, that you can uh, look at but um, I decided still to do a, a detailed video. So for instruction still the Tarantula Pro is a little better than the Ender 3. Now for the mechanical, uh, mechanical design um, I give a small edge to the Ender 3 because of the uh, the frame is very big and the frame of the Tarantula Pro is a little uh, thinner so mechanically wise in terms of um, solidity I uh, give an edge to the Ender 3 but for electrical um, without looking at the design of the control board uh, just the way that the um, the power supply and the control board uh, are installed uh, in the Tarantula Pro compared to power supply on the side here, control board over there and here it's open uh, on the side for the, you can actually touch the, uh, the, um, the circuit board for the display. Really uh, it's, it's cheap, right? When you look at the Android 3 here on the side this is what you see here on the side of the Ender 3, right? It's not finished. Versus here, this nice plate in the front. I give an edge to the Tarantula Pro also for cable management. Uh, you have exits on the sides and on the back for uh, cables, for the limit switches. Also in the front for the Y-axis motor. So cable management is very nice on the Tarantula Pro. Now, the, um, let's talk about how you print. Of course, you can print via USB uh, if you connect your printer to a computer, like a laptop. But if you use an SD card, the Ender 3 takes a micro SD. The Tarantula Pro has a big slot over here and takes a standard SD card. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I prefer by far handling an SD card than a micro SD card. 
So for ease of use, I give again a point to the Tarantula Pro. Now the Ender 3 and the Pro have a resume print function. If there is, for example, a power failure, the Tarantula Pro doesn't, unfortunately. So that's a little, that's a little of a drawback, uh, in my opinion. A printer in 2020 should have really a resume print function. Uh, in terms of bed, printing bed, the Ender 3 and the Pro have a flexible bed, so it's very easy to remove a print. On the Tarantula Pro, it's a fixed bed, so more difficult to remove your print, but the adhesion is much better on the Tarantula Pro. So if you're printing something that is small but high, it will stick over here more than the Ender Pro. But for ease of uh, print removal, I have to give a point here to the uh, Ender 3. Also, the Ender 3 comes with a spool holder. The Tarantula Pro, you have to print it. Uh, you get an SD card uh, in the box, so you can print it yourself, but it is so cheap uh, that I would like a manufacturer like Creality, uh, like they do, to provide a spool holder. Now, in terms of noise, <laughs> Noise is important because a lot of uh, you guys uh, have or will have a 3D printer in their office, uh, not in a remote location, uh, in the house for example, I'm in my basement here. The noise is similar. The Tarantula Pro is a little quieter but not a big difference. So here they're at the par. Uh, the feeder design. The, uh, uh, you can see probably that here, it's red here. I did upgrade the feeder uh, on my uh, Ender 3 to an aluminum feeder. The plastic feeder was giving under extrusion uh, way too uh, often. The uh, Titan extruder in the Tarantula Pro is much better. For the Ender 3, it comes a uh, Pro, it comes with the aluminum feeder, so then they are at par. For print quality, uh, I don't know uh, if you saw my previous video, in case you didn't, let me get my uh, chest piece over there. This is a piece I like to print to uh, show people um, a quality of a print. And in my previous video, I did show that this print is with the uh, Tarantula Pro and with the light reflection. Look at that. Look at this nice print. And this is with a stock Tarantula Pro. Like, I did not do any, like, real tweeting. This is right from the assembly that I did uh, for the previous video. So, print quality, I have to give a little edge to the Tarantula Pro. The Ender 3, don't get me wrong, is a great printer for the price, but the print is a little superior with the uh, Tarantula Pro. Customer service is important in case you have a problem and I did have a problem with my Tarantula Pro and I talked about that in my test video and this was because the SD card I was using was too slow which is not the problem of the end of 3. So my guess is that the control board in the Tarantula Pro is a little more finicky and, and, and needs a fast SD card. So customer service was good. I got my um, my, uh, my problem solved in a, uh, in a couple of days, basically. They told me uh, what to check, what to test. For Creality, I haven't had to uh, contact Reality, really, but I've, I've heard good uh, things about their customer service. So I have to give it here a par. Now let's talk about pricing. This is, at the time of this video, the Tarantula Pro is 230 US dollars, so 230. The Ender 3 is 190, 190, and the Ender 3 Pro is 230, 230. So to be fair, because of the design, the Y-axis is wider on the 3 Pro, just like the Tarantula Pro. The 3 Pro comes with a better feeder, similar to the uh, Tarantula Pro. So if we compare these two, the Pro and the 3 Pro at 230, Tarantula Pro at 230. Same price. Um, so it becomes basically 
a personal choice. Like if you add all the points over here, uh, the Tarantula Pro has a few more points than the Ender 3. Uh, but what can I say? Personally, I prefer the look of the Tarantula Pro. It looks more like a finished product. Um, don't get me wrong, the Ender 3 Pro is a good printer. With the price difference, I would not buy an Ender 3 these days. I would buy the Ender 3 Pro. And at the time of this video, there is a new printer coming out, the Ender 3 uh, uh, version 2. So I don't have it, obviously. Uh, and I cannot say anything. I don't know enough about it. But that could be a nice uh, option uh, compared to the Tarantula Pro. So guys, this is what I wanted to say about the, uh, these two uh, printers, and especially the Tarantula Pro. I invite you to look at my previous videos if you haven't. If you buy one, uh, you should probably uh, follow my assembly video because I go step by step. I made a couple of mistakes that um, could happen to you and you can learn from my mistakes so that you don't make the same mistakes. And uh, so yeah, so that's it for now guys. So if you have any questions, put them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a, good, have a great day. Goodbye, guys.